So I'm so appreciative of the, um, the talks by Allison and Mishi early today, earlier today because they really set the scene for where what we're proposing was born and that is in the free basics and net, ne network neutrality debate. But before I, I talk about that, I want to wind the clock back a bit as to 2010. In 2010, the Alliance for Affordable Internet Access didn't exist. Uh, affordability as an issue wasn't on the radar of a single development organization. But in the summer of 2010, Facebook launched Facebook Zero. And my reaction was, hallelujah, somebody actually gets affordability. Finally, someone is actually talking about affordability and addressing it. So much as I had uh, issues even back then uh, on, on uh, private, uh, Facebook's privacy policy, still, someone's talking about affordability and it is crucial to access. It is the, is the key enabler. So when the, when, when the debate resurfaced um, with the launch of Free Basics in India, I was deeply conflicted because I really do think affordability is the underpinning of access for all. At the same time, you know, what we've seen in the last year in this country in particular is just how powerful platforms are in terms of shaping public debate, in terms of uh, creating filter bubbles, uh, in terms of mediating the way we operate in the, in the public sphere. So having something that's partially open or that it creates a new default is also is not acceptable, even if it does address the issue of affordability. So this is what took uh, my co-conspirators, uh, Steve Eslar and Christoph Stork, who can't be here, uh, into this deep into this debate of well, how do we resolve this issue? And we started thinking about, well, how did mobile networks grow in sub-Saharan Africa? And the key to that growth was pay-as-you-go networks. And the way pay-as-you-go networks work is that uh, it costs you nothing to be on the network as long as you have a phone, right? So you can receive calls for free and be on the network. Now, it costs the operators a lot of money to maintain all those phones registered on the network, but it's in their interest because the value is in the connectedness of everyone on the network. And that was, that was a big insight for us. And then, but as we were just discussing it, it also became clear that actually voice is, um, I don't want to use the word burning platform because it's got such negative connotations now, but, but that um, uh, revenues for voice are steadily declining. And increasingly, operators, in order to maintain their revenues, are having to uh, derive it from data with the inevitable end that we are moving towards data-only networks. So mobile network operators need a new plan. And as we were looking at the, the statistics of access, 1.2 billion people on the continent and only 310 million who have some kind of internet access. And I think the, the missing intermediate statistic here is this one, that 960 million people are covered by a 2G signal. And this is a gigantic missed opportunity so, and make no mistake, 2G is data. Now, I'm sure some of you are thinking, even as we speak, that, uh, oh, what's he proposing? Some kind of, you know, internet for the poor, slow speeds for the poor. Not at all. What I'm proposing, or what we're proposing, is let's raise the bar. Let's set a new minimum, not a zero, but at 2G, sort of 64 kilobit speeds. Because make no mistake, slow data is valuable data. You only have to look at the growth of messaging platforms over the last few years to understand that small amounts of data are profoundly valuable. People use WhatsApp for uh, maintaining social contacts, but also for organizing political movements, for um, people run entire businesses on chat systems. This is incredibly valuable data, even though it's slow. So that's the question. 960 million people covered by 2G data, yet only 310 million people using it. What's the barrier? The barrier is affordability 
um, partly in order to pay for it, but also to discover the value for themselves, because the value of the internet is different for everyone. And you can't actually, you don't have that space to play, to innovate, to find that value if it's expensive. Now, you know, we were talking about, you know, a few dollars um, per gigabyte for, for access. And to this room, it doesn't seem like a lot of money, but it is a lot of money. And I, I want to illustrate it with a story. I want you to imagine that you've, uh, you've never been to a casino before. You've never played blackjack. And you walk up to the blackjack table and you make a bet. And the bet is $1,000. You bet and you lose. And the only lesson you take away from that table is never play blackjack again. That was the lesson I learned anyway. <laughs> but, um, but if that bet is just a few cents or even free, you can begin to wonder. How did I play the game? What did I do wrong? Maybe I should try again. Maybe there's a new strategy. And you can begin to discover how to play the game, how to discover value. And that's the key in affordability of access. So what do we want to do? We want to turn on the internet for everyone with a data-capable phone. Not at broadband speeds, but at basic speeds, 2G, 64 kilobits per second. And that sounds, on one level, it sounds like a crazy idea. But on another level, there are, there are excellent precedents for it. So voice networks themselves that brought people on the network first and assumed that value, they would become paying customers. Um, you only have to look on your phone to discover the host of, of, uh, of services that you get for free on the expectation that you will discover the value in them and want to pay more for them. And on the internet as well. So, so what happens if we turn on freemium internet for everyone? Well, first of all, citizens can experience the internet without risk. And this yeah, hits right to this heart of discovering value on the internet and becoming a kind of internet citizen. It also means that all phones are always on. There's always a minimum level of access. And that can spawn lots of interesting things. On voice networks, please call me services. Nobody thought of please call me services as, as a way that would, um, that would enable um, uh, the poor to actually participate in the network without paying. Minimum level of access will unleash similar kinds of innovations. And this plays straight into what mobile operators need because they need to move to a data only platform. And this turns all subscribers into data subscribers and creates a platform for organic growth for mobile network operators. And governments get a bonus as well, a huge bonus. In sub-Saharan Africa, governments have spent millions of dollars on e-governance services. And if those are only reading, uh, reaching 20% of the population, if overnight you could turn that up to 50, 60, 70, 80% of the population, you get a massive increase in leverage in e-governance services. So the overall impact is unlocking human potential, skills, and growth in general. So how are we going to do that? What do we want to do? We want to develop a bulletproof model, a recipe for mobile network operators to understand how this is the best option for them. So that's modeling income for them over uh, a number of years in terms of how their revenues would change on a freemium internet model, um, digging into the technical underpinnings of the network. So what happens to a 2G network in a rural or an urban setting, a 3G or 4G network? How, where are the points of pain going to be in terms of doing that and then modeling user behavior? And we think we have a great team to do it. So I'm a, I'm a technologist. I've been uh, involved in affordable access in sub-Saharan Africa for over 20 years. I'm a social entrepreneur. I've built affordable access technologies. Um, Steve Eslar is a former communication regulator in South Africa. He's uh, now a consultant and is uh, well-versed in understanding the, both the regulatory and business needs of operators. And Christoph Stork, uh, is a PhD in economics. He has done uh, grassroots research in, uh, along with Research ICT Africa in over 20 countries and has modeled economic changes for operators across the continent. We want to develop the model, engage mobile network operators in, uh, throughout southern Africa where our networks are strongest, and within 12 months, 
have a freemium internet turned on in two to three pilot countries. So that's it. We have a, what we'd like to do is create the recipe for this change. Thank you.